Okay, this is an impromptu video for the Rest in Peace Mausoleum. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about this guy in the drawer. He gets stuck up and he won't lay back down. That's what this one's here for. This and the guy in the door here wouldn't go back in, uh, which was a broken gear. But uh, to get to this, to fix this, this is a... Uh, you might be able to do it from up here. I had to take this one out because I couldn't get to it. Also, there was debris stuck in the teeth, which prevented it from spinning. Anyhow, you need to pop off this, which is mm, on the ones I've worked on are not really glued on very well. Um, you're probably going to have to take the bottom out. Sorry. Um, remove the main mechanism first, because this is a pain, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it to remove to fix. You can just unplug it right here if you just want to uh, make it non-functional. But you need a long, thin screwdriver like that. I'll just give you an idea. I started at 12. This one's 6 inches. So, and the shaft of it is 2 and a half. You got to reach down inside and unscrew these three screws, which are, let this close. And then I'm going to turn this off so it goes into its reset. It turns back on. I'm going to unplug this so I can get closer to the camera. So, here is the crypt guy, Mr. Agori Mess. And this is attached into these three holes, like so. So, reaching through this uh, dome light or skylight, you got to get these three screws. One, two, and three. So you can drop this out the bottom. Once you do that, uh, this gets uh, somewhat loose. Now, to get this off, he needs to be all the way out. So, as you know, when this turns off, everything resets, so it goes all the way back in. Unless yours is stuck where he's in the upright position, and he's stuck on this hole. So... Uh, if he's all the way out, you're already part way there. If he's uh, in, you got to get him back out. There's no way to uh, remove this faceplate without him. So, and I know this is a resetting one, and people get all anxious about resetting systems. And if you turn them off, you can screw them up, which is in most cases correct. But unfortunately, sometimes during repairs, when I do repairs, I have to turn them off mid-cycle because there's no way to access the hardware. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it back on, get him to pop out. And when he pops out, I'm going to unplug it. So he's going to be in the out position. I can unplug it from here, which is what I would recommend. Or you can just unplug it from the circuit board, which I don't recommend as much. So, and up, out. So... No. This is held on with a single screw right here, which goes right there. And then it's got two alignment tabs that press against the plastic to keep this square. This is not glued to the front of the porcelain. So, this is the tricky part. This door fits in this hole. It just doesn't look like it. So you gotta finagle it and go sideways. And then... Voila. So there's your door. And then, so, now this is a lot harder to do when it's inside this indentation here for uh, its face inside the patio open area. So, yeah, it's easy as crap when it's sitting in your hand. Woohoo! But it is really difficult. Take your time, be patient, so on and so forth. So, the reason this thing fails and gets stuck in the sitting position is it doesn't just use micro switches, which is one here. And there's one here. This also uses magnets. There's two little magnets right there, little need DME magnets. The back one is on this slide. The front one is supposed to be stuck here. Now I see this all the time. This front one comes off and it follows. This magnet is what causes the delay for this gear on this row of threads to pull and drop him because 
the drawer is not attached to this row of teeth. See? It's a slide. And what the slide does is there's a little bit of slack. As you can probably see right here, there's a gap. When it closes, it pulls this first, and then it smacks right here, which then pulls the drawer in. This magnet is your delay. If this magnet comes delaminated or unglued, there's no delay. And this guy gets stuck in the sitting position, and then, well, you know the rest. He's stuck. And it's a pain. So, if you think you are talented enough, you can try and glue this magnet back into place while it's inside the house, which I've never been successful at, because it's a magnet, and it sticks to everything that's metal. At the same token, you need to super glue this bad boy back on without gluing it to the sled or the tray. Because if you do, this doesn't move anymore. It's super glue. So, I just glued this one back on. And this one's been rubbing so much that this black powder is actually magnetic dust. Because this magnet's no longer square. It's been sliding back and forth so many times before it got stuck, it's been grinding the magnet down. Also, any dirt in the air that's magnetic will stick to those two magnets. So, uh, so when you glue it in, which I did uh, just before I started filming, make sure that you put the magnet in front of this one so they're the same. They're not opposite polarities. Or they're opposite polarities, sorry. Not the same polarities. Because if they are the same polarity, they repel. Opposite polarities attract. That attraction is the delay that allows this little guy to do his thing and drop. <laughs> so... Other causes that cause this thing not to drop and get stuck, which is also very similar to the oh mortuary or the graveyard with the hill and the little guy pops out of the casket. Very similar mechanism is this slide. Like I said, it's separate. Crap, grit, dirt, dust, hair, fur, whatever, gets caught in here. And, well, it binds. It stops the delay. Not as common, but it does happen. Um, so you need to, before you tear it apart, see if you can see if there's anything in here. And you also need to keep this lubricated. If this doesn't slide separately from this drawer, then it, again, the dude doesn't sit back down. Now, this does, when it pops up, it jerks. I can't fix that. It's jerking because the magnets are worn. And it's allowing it to go too far forward. I don't have any magnets of this size. I've never seen magnets of this size that are rectangular. And if you ever cut a magnet, it's really hard to do. So, um, the little bit of a jerk is okay. It's not overextending because the micro switch stops it. It's not going to break the gears because the micro switch stops it. So, as long as the micro switch doesn't fail, the gears won't fail. Um, Technically, dry rot and other heat related things aside. He lays down relatively smooth. He just pops up a little bit more violent, which kind of gives it a more spooky, you know, Whoa! jump scare. But it's, uh, it is what it is. It works. Unfortunately, it'll never be OEM because it has wear. Everything wears. So <laughs> when I glued this on, first time I tried it, I glued it with my finger. Because, of course, if I'm trying to hold it with my screwdriver, it sticks to the screwdriver. And I don't want to use my porcelain tip um, needle nose or uh, tweezers because I don't want to ruin my porcelain tip tweezers. But on my second attempt, I was able to push it down with my fingernail and then hold it down a little bit with the back edge of the screwdriver without gluing my screwdriver to that and not having this glued to the sled so it doesn't function again. So... Now, when you reassemble this, it has to be in the out position. If you reassemble it with the in position, you're never going to get this thing through. So, this is one of those houses that when you work on it, you need to be able to hopefully make it go on and off to get the different pieces out. Like right now, he's standing outside. If he's standing outside, you can't get him out. You get stuck. You get stuck on the bottom lip of the house. If that happens... I'm not going to lift the house because I'll rip all the wires. On the front entryway is this great piece of plastic. It is glued to the porcelain. Pop it off with a screwdriver or a spudger. And 
using a long, thin screwdriver, number one. And you can see right there, there's a Phillips screw. I'll tip it a little. Maybe I can zoom in. So it's in the top corner of the screen because I'm not moving the house because I have a prop so it doesn't tear the wires. There's a little screw right here in the middle. See the little guy right there? Reach through the door frame, like so, and unscrew it. Once you unscrew it, he falls. And then you can lift him, push him in, and allow the doors to close. And once you do that, you can then remove the bottom. So if this fails in its worst positions, this guy wedged against the the backer door, and this guy stuck in the open position. This, whether it's open, closed, or halfway in between, still comes out without any problems. You can still get this thing apart. This, pop off the skylight. Be careful, there are wires attached to it. Uh, when you reach inside with a long, thin screwdriver, careful, there are fairy light wires in here, which are thin, and I mean thin, coated wires. Try not to rub the coating off, and do not break them. They are a pain to resolder. Uh, unscrew this, but you need to get this out first in most cases. So if he's stuck in the out position, take your screwdriver, stick it behind the door, behind his head in front of the door frame, take out that one screw, and then push him in carefully while putting pressure on the door so they close. And then this whole thing will come out the bottom once you break the glue, like every Leamax, the whole base is glued in. Yes, you do have to remove the rubber mat. If he won't go in all the way or he gets caught, like this one did, pop off the plastic plate. It's just held on with glue. You can see the little glue drops on it. Pull this piece out. Carefully set it aside because there are wires that go up inside that do not unplug. And then work with this. And like I said, this isn't going to be the easiest. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to frustrate you. And patience, very important. Get the drawer out. Doesn't matter how you do it, except for pulling. Do not pull it. Um, if you can't get the drawer out with a um, the computer or the circuit board, not really a computer, turn the power off or unplug it from the house and then run four and a half volts to these two connections on the back of the motor. You can run three volts if you want to make it slower so you don't break it and you don't reverse the, the polarity because if you reverse the polarity and it's already in, It'll just try and pull it in more because you're you're bypassing the safety switches. Um, you can use this plug, and if you can get it in there, you can touch one side here and then run something from the plug over to the other contact and flip it over if it's going the wrong direction. That's worst case scenario. Normally, this will open if the circuit board's bad. Use it as a static prop. These are these circuit boards; they don't make spare parts, uh, especially if the blob chip fries. Or the sound chip. One of those two. So. And. Then you can get all this out. And then you just reverse the process to put it back together. Uh, I would use hot glue. When reassembling. Now the bottom is already hot glued in. But these are not. This one and this one are not hot glued in. I would recommend using hot glue. Because if this fails again, you are at least going to have to pop this one off. Which is the one on the left. Looking at the front of the house. This one, not so much. Unless you need to re-adhere this glue blob. Because this circuit board fell behind the um, cremation chamber. You can lift this with a pair of pliers. Pop this one off and drop some hot glue down inside. If you're really good at aiming, you can re-adhere it. Hold it for a few seconds. You're good to go. This one you shouldn't have to take off unless it doesn't work. So That is how you get into the RIP mausoleum to repair a stuck drawer because 99% of the time it's that magnet and or a stuck man <laughs> the crypt keeper because this one came to me as he was stuck and didn't move at all and this was stuck and pressing really hard trying to pull in against this piece I mean you could see him just leaning forward as it's pushing back uh, if you're curious of why the little dude in the front didn't work, that is because, and I have spare parts, that's one of the reasons I was able to fix it. The gear drive had broke, I don't know where the piece went. I kept it just so I could try and find a replacement. Oh, it's right here, it fell behind. So, this dude runs on, he screwed into this little stud, 
and then this is the track that runs back and forth. Now, on the side of the track, there's supposed to be something right here. Now, if you can see in the light, there's a little... Can you hear my fingernail clicking it? That piece of plastic broke off, so he was stuck. And the reason none of the gears could pull him back in is because that piece of plastic got wedged in the teeth of the gears. So, yeah. You can find things like this. Unfortunately, they don't have that piece of plastic. So, where this is broke... Uh, I'll try and just so it's a little bit more visible on the camera. You can see the hump now. It's darker. Uh, I was going to try my test piece, maybe putting a, a, a screw or 3D penning something to see if it'll stick. The other problem is this has been trying so long to pull itself back in that it broke one of the teeth off under my finger right there. You can see it's missing. So it might be trash, but I'm going to keep it to see if I can find something to replace that piece with. Like I said, this is from a parts house. That's how I'm able to fix a lot of these is I buy broken ones and then I strip them for parts. So that's the mechanism from a parts house, which allows me to repair this. This I just had just like mine, which was the one I took apart. If you watched the previous video on the RIP mausoleum, a stupid magnet came off. But that wasn't the only thing wrong with the house. It also lost the lights and the dome, and he got stuck, and this wouldn't open. It had a whole bunch of issues, but it was cheap, and it was broken, and I got to make a video to help you fix yours. Uh, one last thing, I want to thank um, a person named Sylvia. This is actually hers. And she sent me this nifty little kit of different spudgers. Spudgers and tweezers. Um, by the time you see this, it'll probably be three or four weeks before this gets put up on the internet. Maybe sooner if I can talk my editor into doing it faster. But she got this from Amazon. It was delivered to me at four o'clock in the morning. And I'm going to say uh, I've always used the thinner ones at Flex. This doesn't have a lot of Flex. But I really like this one. This one works really good for scraping and then this one with the hook works good for pulling and if you got a screw that stuck look at that little notch right there so you can pop things out i haven't tried the other ones yet um these are the plastics and these are the metals and then the tweezers are um i don't know if the tweezers are they're metal uh, there's another one there fine point these are not as fine uh, these actually are got the silver tips that are flat, and that's got the sharp, pointy one. And it comes with a belt loop. So if you want to wear this on your belt or hang it on your wrist, I thought that was kind of interesting. But I want to thank Sylvia for the gift, which uh, I was able to use for the first time, brand new. Got it this morning on repairing her house it was able to allow me to pry the bottom out and get the screws that are inset to pop them up and get them out from inside the plastic uh, especially when you're working on the door guy here so thank you again for that so that's how you hopefully repair this now if you have a broken gear it's a different story take it apart replace the gear if your motor's burned out this is a stepped nose motor if you can see in there you'll see the Motor's a round body, then there's a step. You have to measure the barrel diameter, the step diameter, the height, the whole nine. I recommend using a digital caliper that's in millimeters, because motors are in millimeters. And then search Amazon, eBay, and the general internet. Uh, sometimes American Science Surplus has them. Um, I've had to replace them before. I bought them from Amazon, eBay, and American Science Surplus, because the Parma 56 is notorious for using that style motor. And if you don't use that style motor, it doesn't fit securely, and the motor can spin inside of its uh, housing. So, All right. Well, thanks for watching this. Uh, one of my shorter ones, but it's just going over the components once you're in this thing. If So it's a little bit more detailed than the original video. The original video tells you how to take it apart and tells you how to fix a lot of it. But this is more detailed since I get a lot of questions on this guy. And it's a pain to try and describe it. It's the magnets. You got to fix the magnets and one magnets. So now you can see where they're at right there. 
Or if you open this up and the magnets are stuck somewhere else, like they're attracted to the speaker. So if this thing tips sideways, they'll fly over to that speaker magnet and stick. That's where they go. One's on the sled, one's attached to the plastic housing, and that is your delay to allow Mr. Uh, Mess to uh, drop before the door closes. So I'm going to get this thing back together, get it back to its owner. So thanks for watching this shorter video. Till the next one.